So you wanna to go to medical school. Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how I got in. And honestly, I hadn't really decided that I was definitely gonna go until about a year before applying. If you think that you're gonna get into medical school magically, just because you're the average applicant, then I feel for you, because I was the exact same way. I thought that just because I had an okay GPA and an okay MCAT, that I was ready to get into medical school, but I was wrong. In fact, one of my mentors during the process told me, Brian, before you go, you need some serious polishing. After all the pain and confusion of the medical school process, this is what I would do differently. I would cut out all the negative self-talk. I felt really dumb in high school. I didn't have any great extracurricular activities I was doing. I was getting a C in every single math class I took. When I got out of university, I wasn't in that different a situation. My GPA wasn't outstanding. I didn't have a lot of extracurriculars under my belt. Looking at the prospect of actually attending medical school was really daunting to me. If you're watching this video, I'm sure that you're a lot like how I was at that point. Working with doctors and seeing other medical students, it's easy to put these people on a pedestal and think, I'm not like them. You're nervous. You've either worked for years to get to this point or you're looking down a very, very long road ahead of you. The way our system looks at doctors is like they're superheroes. And when I looked at them, I thought to myself, that's not like me. I'm just a regular person. I make mistakes all the time. If I've learned anything from this process, it's that all those nights I spent staring at the ceiling or those mornings I spent in bed staring at the ceiling, thinking to myself, am I really good enough to be a doctor? They're wrong. And you'll see, these admissions committees don't make mistakes. And when you get to the end of the road and you get in, you will be a doctor and you'll be a damn good one. In fact, just because you're scared, you can tell it's something that's important to you and something that intrigues you. Everybody who's gone through this process has felt the same way you are now. And I promise if you stray from becoming a doctor, you're making a mistake that thousands of people do every year. Listen, 90% of people who are pre-meds don't become doctors. The reason that is, isn't just because the MCAT's hard or GPAs are hard or the admissions committees are intimidating. It's because they doubt themselves and they stray from the path. Most of the time through negative self-talk. That's what happened to me. I almost went and did a different career path because I was so convinced that I wouldn't make a good doctor. Now that I've gotten into medical school and I'm so excited to be going, I realized looking back that I just wasted time with all that negative self-talk and that imposter syndrome is a real thing and it keeps thousands of pre-meds from getting to the end of the road and becoming an excellent doctor. Plus, going through the process, I wasn't being genuine to myself. I was trying to be the generic applicant. I was trying to check off all the boxes that I figured admissions committees wanted me to be. I was trying to do everything that I thought would make me like the other applicants that were getting into these schools which was one of the dumbest things I could have done in hindsight. When I got out of university and I wasn't sure if I wanted to go and become a doctor, I started working in different career fields. By doing this, I actually found what made me passionate about becoming a doctor, and it was international medical volunteering. This is gonna be different for every single person who goes into the field. So if you're just trying to check out things with the intention of checking off a box, that makes you like this doctor in your mind, you're making a mistake. You need to realize that what makes you unique is what's gonna make you a better doctor and get you into medical school to begin with. Sure, there are certain things that you practically gotta have to go to medical school. You gotta have some form of research. You gotta have some volunteering, some experience shadowing. When going about these things, you need to find the kinds of things that interest you. Don't just shove yourself into a box and think to yourself, I'm doing research, so I'm definitely gonna get into medical school. In reality, it's the research that that you're passionate about that's gonna get you into medical school. It's the volunteering that you enjoy that's gonna get you into medical school. And it's shadowing the doctors that you actually want to go into that field that's gonna get you into medical school. When I was going through the interview process, it was painfully clear to these doctors what activities that I did that I was just checking out boxes for and what activities I did that were actually really enjoyable to me and got me more interested in the field. I always perceived that the mistakes in my applications were death sentences, that all the C's I got in my classes or the fact that I didn't come from a top university were things that were dragging my application down. In reality, these mistakes gave me something to talk about, to show that I was willing to work through things that I had done wrong. The admissions committees enjoyed hearing that I had made a mistake and I had done things to remedy it instead of just sitting and wallowing. Just think of it like this. Bones grow the most and become the strongest where they get the most trauma. You're the same way. Those places that you've made the mistakes, you're becoming the strongest. Mistakes are inevitable. And when you get to the end of this road in medicine, you'll realize to yourself that you didn't just get this handed to you, you earned it. 
I went to UC Santa Cruz, which is just as popular for psychedelics and marijuana use than it is for natural science. If you're going to community college or a lower ranked university, you don't need to worry at all. It's more about your performance at these universities than it is about what college you've gone to. Plus, every college, university, or wherever you go to school adds a different perspective on becoming a doctor. And that's what medical committees want. They want diversity in their incoming classes. Most people getting into medical school these days are taking gap years. And this isn't because they're not prepared to go to medical school right out of college. Maybe you just need to see a bit more of the world before you apply. And you'll be able to get more extracurriculars that you could use during your application, which will add a lot of flavor to it. During my gap years, I worked four different jobs. I visited several different continents. I've made thousands of friends from all over the world. I've made so many memories from these times that I would never throw away. Once you get into medical school and you start the path of becoming a doctor, you'll realize that you won't have much time to actually go and experience the world. You'll be working away, becoming an excellent doctor. And you'll have a ton of medical debt that you need to pay off. Maybe it's a good idea to take a few years or a couple years or one year at least to go see the world. If I were to do the process again, every single time I would take a few gap years. The reality is you are young once. And when we're looking back at this time, when we're old, we're gonna realize that that time we spent investigating the world, checking out new activities, were some of the best years of our lives and we will not regret it. One thing I do regret is not asking for my letters of recommendation sooner. As soon as you're done with an activity that can be applied to your medical school application, you need to ask the person for their letter of recommendation and have them submit it into Interfolio with the AMCAS recommendations. By not doing this, I got a lot worse letters of recommendations. People remember who I was, sure, but the actual activities that I did with them and the relationship that I had with them during the time of the activity had faded in their mind. Interfolio will save it for you and then you can use it later. I'm not a brand ambassador, guys. It's just a super helpful program and it'll make your application five times better. Confronting all these issues took years of my life and many, many mistakes. So I hope that providing you with them will help you avoid these mistakes. Finally, genuinely coming to medicine as my career has been transformative to me and I know I'm never gonna look back from it. It's a bit cheesy, but the reality is there has never been an applicant like you before. You have a unique personality and story, and this is gonna add diversity to the medical school class. Let me know in the comments below any advice you need or any help I could give you. I got other videos here, and those are gonna help you in the process too. So let me know if there's anything I can do, guys. Please like, please subscribe, and I appreciate your time.